Critical philosophy is largely organized around what we can understand and perceive through our senses. If we can't see it, smell it, taste it, hear it, and what not, touch it, um, then it's, it's inadmissible within those schemes of, of, of thought that are contained within critical philosophy. Speculative philosophy is willing to branch beyond what's immediately perceptible. And within speculative philosophy, the broadish, broadest scheme of thought is um, uh, a cosmology. The crowning product of Whiteheadian scholarship and brilliance is represented in his monumental work called Process and Reality, which by its very nature as a, as a cosmology is an attempt to determine um, how everything in the universe is related to everything else. There's no broader scheme of thought in existence than a cosmology. And from that cosmology, we were able to gain a perspective on the nature of, of human beings. Uh, that that um, complied with all the rationalistic criteria of a cosmology and that was the beginning place that gave us a perspective on, on, on the nature of human, who we are as human beings. Um, humans are capable of two basic capacities. One is that we are able to store the past, largely represented in memory and the uh, uh, cumulative uh, number of skills and abilities that we can bring to bear on the present. We are able to store the past, and that's called immanence, I-M-M-A-N-E-N-C-E. -E. So we have our immanence. We also have the capacity to go beyond the immediate present, present, and that's the capacity for transcendence. And transcendence has to do with bringing to bear some aspects of our immanence in the moment with an eye to where the direction towards which we are going. And from that philosophy, the ultimate goal of an educational system is to help the learner actualize his capacity, his infinite capacity for transcendence at an optimal rate. So from that broad philosophy and the basic propositions that derive from that philosophy, we were able to develop a theory of curriculum, theory of teaching, theory of, of evaluation, and, and in essence, as a sum total, create an entirely coherent system. And it turns out that the chief factor in the actualization of all psychological potentialities is uh, learning. And so the goal of the system is to create competent learners. The goal of the system is to ultimately not only teach how to learn, but to convey that process to the learner so that he or she can ultimately take over that responsibility and, and, and be the, the, the um, managing director and executor of one's own uh, actualization process, one's own learning. Um, the brilliant biologist uh, Julian Huxley said that for all practical purposes biological evolution has come to a standstill. Human beings four, five thousand, six thousand years from now will look pretty much the way we look, the members of the human family on, on this planet. But he said, evolution continues nonetheless. It's a psychic evolution. It's an evolution of the mind. It's the evolution of consciousness. 
So the frontier of evolution is is consciousness, not that we were, will change appreciably in, in terms of our physical nature. He said, because of this, he said, because of the human capacity for cosmic self-awareness, human beings are capable of taking charge of the most important work in the universe, namely directing evolution. Some people, someone once said, some people make things happen. There's a second group who have things happen to them. And then there's a third group who just wonder what happened. Well, I think the extant educational systems for the most part, with probably a few rare exceptions, train people to have things happen to them or train them, miss or mistrain them, and they find themselves in the position of wondering what happened. If you train individuals to become competent learners who ultimately can take charge of their own actualization process, then these will be people who will make things happen for the better, for the betterment of hum humankind. Now, I know that's a very abstract explanation, but comprehensiveness is needed. The more comprehensive a theory is, the more useful it is, but also the challenge is greater to show how, it, how, you, oper op how you operationalize it and, and apply it. But once you get a notion to how to do that, then it becomes easier. And um, so I'm a strong advocate of a theory-based approach to education rather than just a string of activities that uh, have no particular coherence at all. It's just a way to keep kids busy or developing a curriculum based on how the information is organized in textbooks. Most um, most curricula are, are, are organized according to the chapters of the text rather than a predetermined sequence based on the development of the students at that particular time. Mm -hmm.